everybody, it's Holly here today with a new video for Marker Pop. And today we're going to be making this fun card using some Distress Ink and lots of products from Mama Elephant. So I'm going to start out using some Tim Holtz Ranger Distress Ink Distress Card Stock. Um, this card stock has a textured side and a smooth side. And everything I'm going to be doing is going to be on the smooth side today. I actually prefer to use the smooth side when I'm... Uh, using my distress things with this cardstock. So I'm going to start out by die cutting the panel from the distress cardstock using the All Pretty Up die from Mama Elephant. That's that scallop border there. And I'm also going to coat the piece of uh, cardstock with a embossing buddy. Every, lots of different companies make this, so it doesn't matter where you get it from. It's an anti-static bag. And I'm going to also use the Happy Mail set from Mama Elephant. And here you can see I have the image embossed on the front of that piece of cardstock. And then I'm also going to use the Incoming Mail stamp set along with the coordinating dies. I'm going to use a couple of the images here. I'm going to use the uh, one of the pandas, the mailbox, and a couple of the letter images for the images. Now I've already pre-stamped and embossed my images. I started out on another piece of the card, watercolor card stock and I'm using the smooth side again and I've gone ahead and used the anti-static bag on the card stock and I stamped the all of the image except for the panda in Versamark ink and then I went ahead and heat embossed it with white embossing powder and then I stamped the panda in the Versafine ink and I heat set that with clear embossing powder. I skipped that step because I'm a horrible messy embosser and you didn't need to see that so <laughs> we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay so we're going to go ahead and start with that piece of distressed watercolor cardstock that I've already die cut and stamped the Happy Meal sentiment on it and heat embossed it in white embossing powder. I'm going to go ahead and use some picked Raspberry Distress Ink and I'm just squirting, pushing this down onto my mat. Then I'm taking a piece of plastic after I've squirted the ink a little bit and I'm just ink smooshing it onto the cardstock. Now again I am working on the smooth side of the cardstock and I'm just dabbing the ink down onto the card front in a random order. I'm trying to make sure I do put a lot more of the ink and concentrate it over where the sentiment is so that helps make the sentiment pop more. Then when you run out, you just add some more ink to your mat and then just spritz it again to pick up some more ink. And then again, just put your plastic down. You can use any piece of plastic for this. I'm using a piece of acetate, I think, that I had laying on my desk. And then once you have it down where you want it, you're just going to go ahead and heat set that with your heat tool. I did about one layer. And then I went back in with the second layer and then I went ahead and heat set that with my heat tool real quick. You could also just let it dry. And after I have that first layer heat set, I'm just going to go ahead and redo the smooshing again. And I'm just going to spritz it with water and then I'm going to add some more. And what this will do will add some more darker specks on top of that already set distress ink that's on there. Then I'm just going to go ahead and clean up my area. This is what's really great about working on the Ranger craft mat is your craft mat can be your palette basically and then I'm just going to wipe everything down with the water make sure you want to clean off your piece of plastic that way when you store it for the next use you're not going to pick up any other colors on it and then I'm going to go ahead and heat set this layer again one more time before we move on to the next step so after I have that heat set I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, mini mister bottle that I was using on my desk and I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the cap and I'm just going to flick some water onto the front of the card panel there. You could also use that other sprayer that I showed there. Or you could just use your water and flick your hand and flick some water on. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just flicking water on. Um, I'm just using what's on my desk, basically. So after I flick the water on, I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes. Probably about a minute. The longer you do let it sit, the more ink it will pull up. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply a paper towel over the top. And then when I lift it, that's going to create some water spots in the background. So it's going to help give that distressed look. Then I'm going to go ahead and dry it again. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on the images. So I'm going to start out by spritzing some water onto the Ranger craft mat. And then I'm going to smush my uh, ink distress ink pads onto the mat as well to create a mini palette. So I'm going to go ahead and use the clean water and that I sprayed on there. And that's going to be my little water area to work with. So I'm starting with the watercolor cardstock that I already have the images stamped and heat set on. I heated the, or I didn't heat it. 
I emboss them with white embossing powder. And then the panda is embossed with clear embossing powder, but he's stamped in black pigment ink. So I'm going to go ahead and start out by putting some clear water down onto the image first. And then I'm going to pick up the distress ink with the paintbrush, the damp paintbrush, and drop that in and then work it around. And that's basically how I color with my distress inks. Just like using watercolors, you're basically just using the inks as your color. The one thing to remember is you want to work light and then build your colors up because you can always take you can always add more color it's really hard to take color away so I'm going to start out by using um let's see stormy sky no what is that color salty ocean I'm using salty ocean for the mailbox salty ocean for some of the letters and then I'm using mode lawn um, mandarin orange tangerine orange squeeze lemonade and pick the raspberry for the little hearts. The colors will be listed down below in the description box below. And I'm just, same thing here, I'm just adding some clear water to each of the little images. And then I'm just picking up the distress ink from the craft mat and then I'm dropping it into the embossed areas. This helps keep the color inside the embossed areas because of the raised edge. And I'm just adding the color down lightly, and then once it dries a little bit, then I go back in, add a little bit more color to create some dim some dimension and depth by adding some shadows. And I'm just alternating the colors. You don't want to work with your colors on the, the watercolor paper too much. You don't want to keep adding too many layers because this cardstock will start to peel up. Um, but this is the best cardstock that I've found that works great with the Distress Inks because it's obviously made for the Distress Inks. But you could use any watercolor cardstock that you have in your stash. So I'm just going to keep going back and forth and just keep adding in more um, color to kind of get build up my color and my image. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the paintbrush into the water, making it damp, then dabbing it on my paper towel, then going into the color that I have smushed on the thing. So I go into the clear water, dab it off my paintbrush, and then I go into the color. So I'm working with a very damp paintbrush. Once you have your first layer of color down on your image, you want to make sure you go back in with a paintbrush that has color on it. You don't want to go back in with just a dry, not a dry, but a paintbrush that just has water on it because the distress things do work with the water so they are going to whisk that color away and you're going to end up with bald spots in your image but I mean if that's the you know the look you're going for then that would be how you'd want to achieve that. So I'm just going to keep um, coloring in the images here then I'm going to add some picked raspberry into the center of the hearts and I hope that ties in the color that I use in the background. Now for the panda I just wanted to add some shading so I'm going to start out adding some sponge sugar just to his cheeks to give him a little color and then for the highlight or the to give him so he's not bright white I'm going to use some pumice stone and what I'm doing here is I'm taking the wet paintbrush and I'm drawing a very thin line around the edge where I want that shadow to be and then I'm dropping in a very thin amount of the pumice stone and then I'm going back over it with a clean damp paintbrush and I'm working that thin line out and just keep fading it and fading it and working it until there's barely any there and it just gives that nice little sheen of a warm neutral gray color to kind of break up that white so he's not stark white because pandas have a yellow tone to them they're not bright white and they're not a cool base they're definitely like a yellow neutral colored tone then I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and heat set those images and then I'm gonna go ahead and use the coordinating dies for the incoming mail set and some washi tape and I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out and run that through my big chop it's gonna line them up there are um, coordinating dies for the Happy Mail set as well. Now that I've had my image all die cut and ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and start putting the card together. So I have a piece of this craft foam laying on my desk and I'm going to go ahead and measure it to fit on the back of that scallop panel. And I'm going to go ahead and use my ATG gun to adhere some adhesive to the back of it. This is the best adhesive to use with this little um, fun foam stuff. 
And I'm using fun foam because it's not super thick and it will give me just a little bit of height but not a lot where my card is going to be ridiculously high. I thought I was going to use it on black background on this one but I decided to go with the white. kind of like that a lot. So I cut a piece of 8.5 by 11 cardstock in half using cutting it at four and a quarter so it'll be top folding. And I'm going to go ahead and attach that scallop panel area to the top folding white card stock. And then I'm going to lay out my images and figure out where I'm going to put them. Now I already did make one of these cards, the one you see in the beginning. So this one here, I'm going to change it up a little bit. I did change up the colors I used for the mailbox. And I'm going to use, I stamped two sets of those pile of letters. I'm going to put them behind him like it's a trail of letters. And he's standing in the middle of it so that they're ready to go into the mailbox. So I'm going to use some Ranger Multimedia Mat to attach the mailbox flat directly onto the panel so that that has no additional dimension, as well as the little row of letters. I'm going to put that one down. And then I'm going to add some Scotch uh, 3M foam tape to the back of the Panda image. And I'm going to add the little letter. I'm going to put a little piece of foam tape on that as well. And I'm going to add that in his hand and it has like he's putting it into the mailbox. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the second set of letters. I was going to put this at the bottom of the mailbox originally, but then I decided to go ahead and put it in front of his feet. So it looks like a trail of letters. So I'm just going to apply some additional uh, Ranger Multimedia Mat to that as well. You could also, um, oh, actually I was like I'm putting phone tape on that piece so it has a little bit of height. Because I'm putting the edge of it underneath the panda and he was put up with dimensionals so I wanted that to um, stick up a little bit. Plus they would be in the forefront, so the foreground. Then I'm going to go ahead and add some Smarkling Clear sequence from Pretty Pink Posh. And I'm using the Mix set. And I'm just going to adhere those down with some Ranger Multimedia Mat, which I squirted directly onto my Ranger Craft Mat because you can just wipe it up when you're done. And we all know I have to have the clear sparkling sequins or my project is not complete. <laughs> and what's great about this technique with the Distress Ink and the ink smooshing is you're going to get a different look no matter how you use it. So I'm going to put the other card down here and you'll see my backgrounds look very similar, but yet they're a little bit different. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.